in 2010, Tom Wujic made a TED Talk on the Marshmallow Challenge. The challenge is really simple. Teams of four have to build the tallest freestanding structure out of 20 sticks of spaghetti, one yard of tape, one yard of string, and one marshmallow. The challenge has two simple rules. One, you have 18 minutes to do it, and two, you have to put the marshmallow on top. Tom implemented this challenge into around 70 workshops with students, lawyers, business graduates, and company leaders. Uh, how did it go? With all this data, he noticed something unexpected uh, with who performed poorly and who performed well in the experiment. For people that performed poorly, it was recent graduates of business school. Who performed well? Recent graduates of kindergarten. Why? Well, we don't know exactly, but what we do know is that the business students generally waited till the end of the challenge to put their marshmallow on top, while the kindergarten kindergartners were putting the marshmallow on top multiple times and early throughout the entire challenge. In fact, on average, the kindergartners tested five different structures during the time, the 18 minute time limit. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Ben is going to tell me that I need to prototype more, that I need to prototype. And that's a good lesson. That's a good lesson. But it's not the lesson that I want to talk about today. The lesson that I want to talk about today is more of an important question for you to consider. I'll tell you the important question in a minute, but first we need to consider the job of the marshmallow. Marshmallows are often described as light and fluffy. They look like clouds, they're soft, but in reality they're actually deceptively heavy. A deceptively heavy item that goes on top of the structure? The marshmallow's job is to test the strength of that structure. When we're building something, we have assumptions about what we're building. And we generally feel that those assumptions are correct, but in reality, they're usually not. Putting the marshmallow on top is a way for us to test those assumptions and make corrections before it's too late. This brings me to the important question of this video. How can I test the assumptions I have about my game and do it more often? I asked myself this question and realized that I needed to get my game in front of players and to watch them play. This was my marshmallow. Since my last devlog, I've implemented some new icons for spells and uh, the void right there that you can go into and a real-time battle system like this. And I was pretty happy with them. I thought that these systems were pretty good and working rather well. So yesterday I asked a few volunteers to record themselves playing what I currently have and the results were pretty discouraging. While the players love the pixel art graphics, they love the spell book, they love the orbs, they were often confused with what certain spells were supposed to do and they were certainly very confused by the real-time battle system. It, it, was, it was not conveyed well in the current build of the game. Even though this news was discouraging, it wasn't actually very surprising. The point of sending the build to these players, these volunteers, and getting them to record themselves was to get feedback early on and to see what was wrong and make corrections. I put my own marshmallow on top and this is what I learned. I, I learned that the real-time battle system was not going to work. Players were too confused about when stuff was going to happen. I needed to remove that, make that simple, and allow myself to focus specifically on what was happening and conveying that well to the players. I'll be removing the real-time system and making it turn-based. I have some ideas for the icons to make them more clear. There were a couple that actually worked pretty well, the fire spell and the blocking icon, but the others weren't that great. And I have some ideas for helping the player understand what the spell does as well. Some ideas for giving the players more details on specific spells. 
So my spaghetti stick structure has crumbled to the ground under the weight of my marshmallow. But I've learned something from this and I'm going to continue using this method to test my structure until it stands strong and can withstand the weight of that marshmallow. Now I want you to ask yourself again the important question. How can you test the assumptions you have about your game more often? I'm confident that, I'm confident that as you answer this question honestly and implement a plan to actually execute on your answer, that your game will be better for it. I want to make a quick announcement here. I'm planning on doing a Demon Lock Kickstarter. Now, we're still probably a little ways away from actually launching this Kickstarter, but you can get a following on Kickstarter to uh, notify people when the Kickstarter goes live. So I've got this page here. If you'd like to be notified when the Kickstarter for Demon Lock goes live, you can follow a link in the description and click the notify me on launch. We're currently uh, two followers away from getting that those nice three digits. So I'd really appreciate anyone who can give it a follow. Thanks so much for watching this devlog. If you'd like to support my content, you can check out my Godot course. Uh, Demon Lock is being made in Godot. It's a free and open source engine. You can check out my course and I will talk to you all later.